Now on Denver 7 News at 7 a.m. on Local 3, mask mandates are coming down across the metro. A look ahead as Boulder's Health Department debates its rules. Also, celebrations in La La <laughs> Land as the Rams are crowned Super Bowl champions. What Von Miller is saying about his second ring. Uh, we're also following some breaking news this morning on border tensions between Russia and Ukraine. Russia's defense minister says military trainings could soon come to an end. Mm -hmm. So we'll have those details for you coming up. Good morning to you. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady. Another busy week, but we're starting off with some nice warm weather on this Valentine's Day. We could get into almost the 60s today, Lisa. Yeah, not only today, today and tomorrow. It's yeah. going to be really mild. Low to mid 50s, in fact, by about noon. So your dog walking forecast uh, incredibly mild today. We're typically mid 40s this time of year. We will blow past that number by lunchtime, close to about 60 by 4 o'clock this afternoon. Pretty looking shot from UNC there in Greeley, and you can see just how much sunshine we have. A very bright eastbound drive here within the next, well, 10 to about 15 minutes. Upper 20s and low 30s, close to freezing as you step out the door, but look at the warm-up. We're going to be at, again, right around 55 uh, to near 60, depending on the neighborhood. Even upper 40s to low 50s for the foothills, so we're going to see a lot of melting today. Coming up, though, I'll take you through our future cast and show you when that next storm hits. Just about, what, 48 hours from now, it's going to look a lot different. Details on our Super 7 day. And right now we have some broken news apparently. This is on the northbound side of Santa Fe, right at I-25, where we have a crash involving three vehicles. And one of them, as you can see from just a moment ago, Air Tracker 7, is actually one of uh, a live vehicle for one of our competitors, TV stations. And uh, somebody plowed into there, hit the truck, and so the crew is okay. But we have a couple lanes on northbound Santa Fe blocked here at I-25 with traffic a little bit heavy trying to get through there. Broadway could get you around it, but it's really not worth an alternate route at this point. It's going to take a couple of traffic light cycles to get through there. The rest of the drive, as you can see here, it looks pretty standard. I-70, 270, the north side, pretty standard. The big problem farther north, though, is this big crash on southbound I-25 right near Bertha. Take a look from that camera. Traffic is barely moving on the southbound side, so use some of those side roads to get down to, towards Highway 56, back over to I-25, and save yourself a whole bunch of time. It was a party in L.A. last night after last night's wild finish to Super Bowl 56. Uh, it got a little too rowdy at times. The mm. LAPD had to respond when some fans took over a bus. Uh, they climbed up light poles and even set off fireworks in the streets. So far, no word of any arrests. Well, that's good. As we take a live look from SoFi Stadium in L.A. this morning, where the lights are still shining bright. Uh, much calmer, though, hours after the Rams uh, had a comeback win with just minutes to spare. Final score in the Super Bowl was Rams 23, Bengals 20. It's the Rams' first Super Bowl title since the 1999 season when they were in St. Louis. The Bengals, unfortunately, are now 0-3 in Super Bowl appearances. And Broncos country was well represented during the game. Denver 7's <laughs> Veronica Costa is here. And Veronica, of course, the most noticeable connection, our own Vaughn Miller. What a noticeable yes. connection, yeah. right? And what a season it's been for him. He started off as a Denver Bronco, and then he was traded over to the Rams and not trade. That's the good one. He got him his second Super Bowl ring. After the game, Miller was asked, well, when does this win actually sink in? Listen to what he had to say about that. Uh, you know, the crazy thing about me, I just believed it. I, I, I believed in Denver. You know, I believed that we was going to be able to get things right and make it to the Super Bowl. And, you know, I've always been optimistic like that. Came here, I had that same belief. You know, I believed in our team, believed in our quarterback, believed in our process and the culture here. And, you know, we just continue to take it one day at a time, one week at a time. And did you catch that? He mentioned the Denver Broncos there and how he believed in them. That Rams win, also kind of a win for the Broncos, if you want to think about it that way. That's because two future Broncos coaches are coming to Denver with those Super Bowl rings. Ijero Evero, he's the new defensive coordinator. And then Dwayne Stukes, that's the new special teams coordinator. And the hope there, as you can imagine, that Super Bowl win experience rubs off at least a little bit on the Broncos. Of course, another Colorado connection, that's Stan Kroenke. Take a look at him there. He's holding that Lombardi trophy. Kroenke, he owns the Rams, also owns the Nuggets, the Avs, and the Rapids here. Of course, that's not all. He also owns Dick Sporting Goods Park and Ball Arena. That's where he has a penthouse on top. Listen to what he had to say about last night's win and the team. Well, it's amazing. and. Uh... Just really proud of this group, and they just hung in there. It was a tough game, and uh, just so proud of them executing at the end like they did. All in all, we are talking about four Super Bowl rings that have that Colorado connection. So 
really good news there, guys. Yeah. Hopefully Stan Kroenke will be holding the uh, Stanley Cup before the year is over, too. That'd be nice. All right, thank you, Veronica. Uh, Von Miller then posted this uh, picture of him on Instagram that he was reunited with the Lombardi Trophy. In his caption, Von shared how much he missed having it around, but a lot has changed since 2016. He says he's excited to show the trophy to his son and said he also has a new city and teammates that will love you just as much as I do. And the halftime show, can we talk about that? It was unlike any other we've ever seen. Low life, your life, but we even need it. It's the one and only D R E. Jack and Dre, you little busters. Ah, such a celebration of hip hop classics there. Uh, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick Lamar all performed their most iconic songs. Uh, with special guests 50 Cent and Anderson Pack. It was the first time the Super Bowl featured hip hop artists as the main act. And one moment that had a lot of people talking was Eminem there taking a knee at the end of his song, Lose Yourself. The gesture is often done to protest racial injustice. The league says it was aware Eminem planned to kneel. You would never know that some of those songs came out 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. They were, <laughs> they're still jams. Uh, more masks are coming down across the metro this morning. Students in Jefferson County and in northern Colorado will get to return to class mask free. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon joins us live from Boulder, where the health department there will discuss ending its mask mandate as well. Colette. Yeah, everything could be changing later this afternoon. The Board of Health is expected to get recommendations from the Boulder County Public Health experts on the two mask orders they have in place here. Now, those orders require masks in all public indoor spaces for people above the age of two. They're also needed in school and child care settings, along with things like camps for kids. They were put into place in August and September of last year. Right now, Boulder County's website says they're experiencing a high level of transmission of the virus, but once that decreases to moderate or low levels for 21 consecutive days, masks won't be required indoors, unless, of course, a business chooses to keep those rules around. Now, state data shows that Boulder County has had 11 days of declining or stable hospital admissions, their positivity rate just a touch higher than Denver County's. Denver County kids will be going back to school without a mask in two weeks, like you guys said, Jeffco kids get to do that starting today. Live in Boulder, Club Bordel on Denver 7. Thank you, Colette. And we have breaking news overseas. Russia's defense minister says some military exercises will come to an end. And there were reports that was the plan all along at the end of February. Also new overnight, Russia's top diplomat is urging Vladimir Putin to continue diplomatic talks with the West instead of taking military action. But that is a 180 from what we're hearing from the White House. The U.S. is pulling most staff out of the embassy in Kiev and warning Americans to leave, saying a Russian invasion could happen at any time. ABC's Ika Jachi has the latest developments. This morning, Russia continuing its aggressive actions along Ukraine's border. Russian troops and heavy artillery performing massive military drills. U.S. officials say in the last 10 days, Russia has accelerated its buildup of forces. Putin now has an estimated 130,000 troops amassed on three sides of the country, with U.S. officials warning of a possible imminent attack. It's likely to begin with a significant barrage of missiles uh, and bomb attacks. It would then be followed by an onslaught of a ground force moving across the Ukrainian frontier. And this morning, Ukraine advising airlines to avoid airspace over parts of the Black Sea out of safety. Still, attempts for diplomacy on display. Today, German Chancellor Scholz is in Kiev, then off to Moscow. President Biden speaking by phone with Ukrainian President Zelensky over the weekend, making it clear the U.S. and its allies will respond swiftly and decisively if Russia invades. Zelensky asking the U.S. to provide even more military and financial support, even inviting Biden to visit the country. We have uh, good sources of intelligence, and they're telling us that, uh, you know, that things are sort of building now to some sort of crescendo opportunity for Mr. Putin. Yet on the ground, a completely different sentiment. ABC's Ian Panel is there. There is no sense of panic here, but people are certainly planning and preparing in case the worst happens. Despite the feeling on the ground, the State Department taking no chances, ordering all U.S. citizens to get out of Ukraine while they still can. And Canada announcing it's closing its embassy in Kiev. And Australia today joining dozens of other nations asking its residents to leave. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. 
Ukrainians across the country are organizing a day of solidarity to take place in Washington, D.C. next weekend to encourage peace and hope in the midst of so much uncertainty in their home country. We visited services at a Catholic church in Denver's Sunnyside neighborhood where mass is in both English and Ukrainian. Tatiana Gajeki is worried about her friends and family who have told her they're afraid and asking for prayers. We all have family, relatives, friends, you know, uh, all kinds of people that we know, and we don't want them to get hurt. They just want to be left alone and, you know, and live normally like every other nation. We have a warning from the Better Business Bureau on Valentine's Day. Why should be careful buying flowers online? And flowers aren't the only thing people are buying. In fact, they're not even the top holiday purchase. What is much more likely uh, to be in your gift basket coming up?